Welcome into another lesson. Jeff back with another snare breakdown. Today we are looking at Rhythm X 2010 snare break. This is a fast one. Here's a little clip of what we're going to be learning. Okay, as you can see, a lot of notes played very quickly. This is probably the most difficult snare break that I've broken down so far. Not in terms of the actual physical notes and flams that are in there, but just the physical speed that it's played at. It's pretty insane. Um, there's some of the notation flying around the internet that talks about it being 156 beats a minute. If you watch some of the finals videos of them warming up before they're playing it, well, they're at least counting it in a lot quicker than that, like 170. So 156 is a good car target tempo for you. But today, as with all these lessons, my main goal is to get you to play it from start to end, even if it's only 120, 130 beats. And then through repetitions, we can whack that speed up so you can play the whole thing. So let's get stuck straight in. We start off with a nice simple intro. So we've got a double stop and then three left-handed flams. Now the left hand is put at the front of the drum like this, I guess is a visual effect. So we get this uh, one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Then we get two pugaders, which are just right, left, left, but rim shots with the release on the snare drum. So we're going to get whole bar will be this. One, two, and three, and the foot, and the one. One, two, and three, and the foot, and the one. Then we're straight into some flams. Now we start off with a paradiddle, paradiddle stop, well, paradiddle stop, I should say, paradiddle stop, paradiddle stop. But we're flamming the right hand of the diddle that's in there. So we sometimes call these choo choos. So we're gonna get para flam tap stop. Para flam tap stop. And a bit of an accent on the first note and the release. This is really, really quick when you play it up to tempo, like 150, 160, 170. Um, and they actually play it all quite low, but only because of how fast it is. I suggest still learn this with a little bit of of an accent in there. Right, then we're into an interesting little rudiment. So this second bar has got, um, Shirley Murphy is a rudiment that goes one, two, three. So it's literally this. And now the left hand. So con constant would be. So six, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, they've taken that rudiment and they've kind of turned it on his head and we started with the three, one, two, three, then the two, and then the one. So try and figure that out. So one, two, three, one, two, one. Now, we, they don't do this, but we could do it off the left hand as well. One, two, three, one, two, one. And then we could loop them. One, two, three, one, two, one. One, two, three, one, two, one. Now, being able to do those is going to make this a lot easier for you because then the next thing we've got to do is put a flam on that first note. So we get the three is flammed. So it's a... a Kind of a, a triple flat, a flam tap, isn't it? Now, there's some of the notation I've seen around the internet that suggests that that second one is flammed as well. Um, when I'm watching it in slow motion, I'm not seeing that flam. If I'm wrong, uh, some of you guys who march might want to come and correct me, but I'm, I'm fairly certain that they don't do that. So we get flam, flam. Now, we end with a... We do end with a flam, so... So, one, two, three, one, two, one, flam. 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 Now I'm doing this quite a lot because I'm imagining that most people learning this find this one quite a strange pattern. I had to play that like hundreds of times to be able to really play that without having to think about it because it's so quick. If I put that with the first bit, we're going to get the power of. So it's the same pace. One e and a two. Uh, one. I can't speak because I'm playing that. One e and a two, and a three e and a four. So yeah. Now that bar, thankfully, ends with something simple. We just two flam taps off the left hand. So we get one e and a two, and a three e and a four e and a one, and that's up to one. I'm going to do this with a met. We're going to go real slow. As I mentioned, 150, 156 is our target. They're playing a little faster but they're a good target for us. I'm going to start off a slow. Let's go all the way down to like, let's try 100, see how slow that is. 
And that's a good tempo, right? So maybe 100 is a good starting spot. So we've got... And... 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 So that's the whole of the first line, right? One. One more. Spend a lot of time on that because that is the key, getting that first bit um, in your mind so you can better play it quick enough because eventually you have to be better like thinking or you're not going to be able to keep up. Right, next line. Let's first go to the first bar. We start with something I hate, which is four with one hand, but it's flam. So we get like a drop four, one, two, three, four, and then we get single strokes off the right hand on the rim, single strokes like that. So that'll be one knee under, two knee under, three. One knee under, two knee under, three. Now, how they got nine guys to play that four, the speed they play it is pretty, pretty damn impressive. So, Guys, you've just got to put the time in on that. You've just got to sit and practice again and again and again and again. That drop four. It's a lot easier on a snare drum than it is on a practice pad because you have to use the reband of the uh, the high the high tension um, snare drum really to to get that four at the speed they're doing it. This is all right. This pad to get the four, but I'm going to shove when I put the flam taps before it. So anyway, that part then is the first part of this section. Rather than doing that as a whole bar four, I'm going to think of that as, as a bar. So that's two counts. The next thing I'm going to do is, let me just have a look, three counts, right? And all we're doing is hand-to-hand, -hand, um, so it kind of drags this thing. So two of those. And then, so. So it's in 16th notes. Uh, I will do this with them, actually. Two, three, four. Is with the um, part before, so the, the drop four. And then we're into another pit that I found a little bit awkward, but once you've got it, it just flows. We've got single strokes one, two, three, four, and a flam tap, and then two single strokes, and then four flam taps. So I'm going to cross into the next line if you see the whole score. Um, if you think of what they called mills, so mills is a rudiment that just goes like this. It's a flam tap, then a left, right. So, and then we repeat them. So, there's one of those in there. So we go one, two, three, four, then a mill, then four flam taps. Just look at the notation and follow me along. You'll soon figure it out, right? So, and. And again, three, four. And. 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 Again, this is super fast, so it's not going to be a chance. We're not going to have a chance to really lift a. Like we can slow. Real low. Using a bit of this arm kind of motion, this speedo technique. Right, let's have a go at the whole of that line plus the extra two flam taps at the end of there. So from the drop four, one, two, three, four. So I'm going up to count two of the next bar. One, two, three, four. And there's a bit of a crescendo on those flam taps, right? One, two, three, four. Let's jump into that next line. So the next line starts with the those last two flam taps that we just done. But if we move forward from that, we're going to then start with these hairters. Well, hairters, very quick, slow, very quick, slow, very quick, slow. Um, a pattern that's often done in in, in uh, drum lines is where we accent the first two notes. So instead of it being 
get kind of drop um, singles. But what they're doing is they're alternating between no accent, accent, no accent, accent. So we get. Now, as with the rest of this, it's crazy fast, right? So you don't really need to bring those accents out very much at all. It's like right on the limit of what I can play them up on. So we've got. So it's a real subtle one there. Now, that actual pan, if you look at the notation on the screen there, you can see that it starts with a left hand. So we're actually going one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. So we've got four physical hairters, but we're playing it in 16th notes. Um, it comes in on count two. So I should come in with a snare drum, right, when I play this. Two, three, four, one. And end on a snare drum. So one. And one. Again, one and one. Um, but if you just practice with the measure with the B point, just coming on to count one, alright? So, so with the flam taps before it, we get that pattern. Right, moving forward then, we then get a nice pattern that just goes and we go to the edge. Hold that bit from the flam taps. Again. Now that isn't the whole of that line, right? But the next part kind of goes across the bar line. So I'm gonna break that down separately. So if we were to just go straight to the next bit, we've basically got um, coming back from the edge. So we've just played, we're then just playing hand to hand um, diddles in three. So back to the middle of the drum. So one, two, three, four, stop. And then, then we end with, so. That's wrong. Come on. However, those diddles, the first two are normal, right? Like we just did. Number three and number four, are this, they're a diddle, but with two lefts. So we get. So the diddle with the right hand, and the 16th note to the left hand. Again, if you haven't done those, it's just a bit of practice. It's all about creating a little bit of tension in the fingers here, and quickly kind of lifting up off the drum. So. And it crescendos. So. We add on there. It's our whole bar. This is again. This comes in on count four, which should be a snare drum. I'm going to come on a down beat. Two, three, four, and again, and again. Last time, and right. Last part of this whole solo. Most people watching this by now should know double beat. The exercise was well, the same pattern as that, but we're doing it hand to hand. But instead of the slow two eighth notes at the end, we change that to a single stroke seven with a rim shot at the end. So ba da ba da ba da ba da 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 becomes one e a two and a e and one e a two and a e and at the end they've just got a little bit of, little bit of visual, but they're just bringing the sticker like this. So we also those changing to 30 second notes. So instead of one beat or two, we get one beat or two. We're just doing those those little diddles. So will be the part. One beat or two and a beat and they're also kind of the tempo in this one, like most snare lines, does sway quite considerably. It slows right down on the and it also slows down on these. Just because they're bringing those out to accentuate, accentuate them a little bit more, right? So we're just hanging off the tempo a bit. Now, when we do it in Met, it's going to sound a little bit different because we're we're being forced to play it in time. Um, if it was in time, 170 of the BC, it would have been silly. Like, so it's a bit more interesting for the viewer. When we slow it down, all right. Let's try doing the whole break, whole thing, top to bottom, but real slow. 
100 beats a minute. So one, two, three, four. So notes-wise, it's not insane, right? It's difficult, but it's not insane. It's just the speed. So that was 100. Let's push it up a little bit. Let's say 125. So we start to get to a reasonable tempo. One, two, three, four. Let's get into some real tempos then. So 135. One, two, three, four. And then 150 is a good tempo to end, tempo to aim for, right? And as I said, 156 gets a bit insane, all right? So we'll do 156 in a moment. Before I do that, with this one, don't give up on this one, right? This one has taken me the most time to learn a snare back of all the ones I've done. It took me probably a week and a half, maybe two weeks of just constantly playing each day to try and get that speed up there. It took, it takes me for most of these, these um, maybe a day to sort of go through the notes and figure out what's going on, and at least another day for me to be able to sort of memorize it. And it's only normally after like day three where I can actually memorize it enough to be able to play it without any music that I can really get close to playing anywhere near the way these guys are on tour. Keep in mind, this is at the end of a WGI tour, right? So that I'm not, I have no idea if they played 110 beats at the start of the season and 210 at the end of the season, right? Things do change through the season. The big thing you're gonna to have to do is adapt your playing. The big thing I learned I had to do was adapt my playing. I couldn't play it like. like all high. I had to kind of adapt the way they're playing where it's low. To get any of that kind of speed so play around with those ideas um most of the people watching this video are still not subscribed so please consider subscribing um, i've got loads of videos still to do if you've got any videos you'd like me to do stick it in the comments below i do read all of those um recently a few people mentioned uh, doing a uh, video on floppy flams that's something that which i'd like to do ditty still gets mentioned a lot and a whole bunch of other snare solos so i'll have a look at those if they're like two minutes solos or three minutes um pieces it's a bit more difficult to break down but um, if you enjoy those videos more than the short ones, or you enjoy the short ones more than the long ones, please let me know. So I'm going to finish off by having a go at playing this 156. You guys go away and practice as much as you can. Go check out some of my other videos, and I'll see you again at the other end. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Other than a bit of a nasty drop four, I'll take that one. So, as I said, please subscribe. See you again in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you soon.